Watson. South Yorkshire and have lived there for about um, eight years now. Well, as you can tell from the accent, I'm not born and bred in Barnsley, I'm born and bred in Gateshead in Tynham Weir. And that's where I started cleaning up in, in the northeast of England until I met my wife Esther. Then we moved to the Midlands, and then I couldn't stand it, <laughs> so we moved north. Um, I know I've got there, why, why are you here really? Uh, is it just to come and listen to me for maybe half an hour to three quarters an hour, or did you get kicked out the house? <laughs> um, some people come to clean easy meetings because they didn't like what's on the telly. <laughs> um, or you've been brown beaten by your brain. Um, I came to my first clean easy meeting about a week after joining. I joined from a list, a warm list in September 1995, which is nearly 19 years ago. And um, I dread to think where my life would be today if my sponsor hadn't made a list and put my name on it. So um, never, never make a mistake of prejudging people. You know what I mean? Because there's some people that's joined Clean Easy who've come in from like good jobs, really. You know what I mean? They've been earning a lot of money. I wasn't, and I'll show you in a minute. But some people have come in into Clean Easy who make already 30, 40, 50 grand a year or they might be running a business. And um, the biggest earner in our team, who you, you might know of Peter Rea, he, he was running a successful business when I first went to him, you know, <coughs> to tell him all about clean easy. He was earning over 100 grand a year, so never prejudge anybody, whether you think they're doing all right or not. But um, I joined <coughs> with a starter kit with 50 catalogues in, in um, on the 26th of September 1995, and I couldn't afford to join. That's how dire my current circumstances were back then. Um, you only got 50 catalogues in the kit. And you can imagine what sort of start I got off to, really. It was a really good start, putting 50 out, lost some, put another 40 odd out, lost some more, put 30 out, and before long, I wasn't making hardly anything at all. So I got off to a really, really slow start in Clean Easy. In fact, my sponsor probably would have thought, he's never going to do it. You know how sometimes you can tell when people join and they're just piddling around with thing and you, you can think to yourself, I'm wasting my time here. Well, my upline back then probably thought that about me because for three or four months I didn't do a great deal. And um, it was only in the January 1996, I think the penny dropped and I thought I'm going to have to start and do this thing probably. Well, this is where I was when I was um, on a joint, I was making about 130, 140 quid a week. In fact, that wage from there says 125 quid a week, which was a full-time wage as a labourer in a factory in Newcastle. And I'd been in that environment since leaving school. Dead-end jobs, dead-end wages, achieving nothing, but just associated with people whose only ambition, ambition in life was to get to Friday. You know what I mean? Um, and when you spend your life associated with miserable, pessimistic people, you become like them. So when I joined, I was not cut out to build a team of distributors. I used to whinge, whine, moan, had a poor attitude. Um, so I had a lot of learning to do, really. Um, and when I, um, when I got going, I knew within about four months that I could do this thing alongside my job. It was not a case if I hated my job with a passion. Um, worked in a fish factory in Newcastle, and he used to come home every day sticking a fish. You were minging, literally. You know what I mean? Uh, if you ever had to get public transport, you would have nobody sit next to you. you know what I mean? um, and some days I had to because the car I had back then sometimes wouldn't start. You know what I mean? So, um, and I just started telling everybody, without consciously thinking, I'm gonna. I'm going to go the whole hog with this thing. I just start telling everybody, tell everybody, my family, friends, neighbours, work colleagues. I just tell everybody. And some of them are probably put off joining Clean Easy by not showing Clean Easy to them. Because there's a big difference between telling people about Clean Easy and showing people Clean Easy. Because some people tend not to believe you when you just tell them, don't they? You tend to just think, oh, ah, you've 
heard it all before. Or I didn't believe it, you know what I mean? So I made the mistake the early days of telling too many people about it, rather than saying, look, can we meet up or can I come and see you? Can I show you, please? And show them the proof of what people were earning. Um, and when I went along to my first meeting in Durham, there was 10 people there, 10, sat around the table. And that meeting was being run by a guy called Rob Foster, who some years have probably heard of. And Rob Foster was making about £2,000 a month to clean easy back then. And I remember thinking, flipping heck, £2,000 a month. Bear in mind, I was making less than £600 a month. Um, and Rob would just talk about how clean easy was going to change people's lives and if you just stuck with it and worked at it, people would go on to make a lot of money. And I just took on blind faith, he was just right, just that like he was telling the truth, you know what I mean? Um, so I started to introduce one, of, one or two people. Uh, one or two of my family joined, I had one or two join at work, um, then I started putting shop ads out, leaflets, cards, because I couldn't afford to do any advertising. I mean, I, I'd have to borrow the money to get going anyway, so I had to pay my mum and dad back the money to join, because I had to borrow the money. <coughs> um, and I started to get inquiries coming in, and one or two people joined, and it just got off really to a, a gradual build alongside a job. And um, there's one thing for sure. If you look at the job world, I did never get off this bottom rung of the ladder. This is. This is a job permit which goes right up to the CAO. And as you know, many people never get to progress up here. Either because you haven't got the qualifications or you don't have the right attitude or the right skills, you know what I mean? But um, I was way, way down there and I would have stayed down there if I'd stayed in a job all my life, you know what I mean? Um, some people could be fortunate to work the way up to like so far up here. But what you find in a job world is the harder you work, the more the demand you, you know what I mean? That you sell your soul to the career, if you like. You don't have a lot of life outside of work. My dad was like that. My dad was a manager for a heating company. And as I was growing up, I didn't see much of my dad. He was always at work from seven o'clock in the morning. He'd come home at seven o'clock, and then he'd be on the phone to the night shift. Night after night after night after night. Worked damn hard and got put on the scrap heap at 50. And I think being put on the scrap heap at 50 uh, made me more determined that that wasn't going to happen to me. No way was I going to work hard at any job and, and just be dumped on the scrap heap by an employer. Um, and while I was working, I mean, I used to um, put things up on me locker door. Tough times don't last, tough people do. Um, I'd have on the visor of my car, whatever it takes. On the back, every time I'd, I'd wake up in the morning, I'd see some of that. I'd just put these little things all over the place. Just do it. Um, you can make money or you can make excuses, but you can't make growth. Because in the early days, as you're doing it, especially if it's not going as well as you would like, there's more, just as many reasons to quit the thing as there is to continue. You know what I mean? So um, you just need to maybe... Um, <coughs> Put these little things around the place which just remind you why you're doing it. Why you're doing quite easy. And within about two and three quarter years I'd work my way out of the, the job world, if you like. I just consistently um, I work shift work, seven or three, three to eleven. And in between that time, I would put everything I could into clean easy. I'd either be doing it before I go to work or when I was coming off from work. And I was just chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. Um, on my own, by the way, because I'd, I'd been married before, before Esther. My previous marriage went down the path just as I joined Clean Easy. So I was on my own, doing everything, retail, sponsoring, support, um, everything that you would normally do to build a Clean Easy business. And this is the job I the letter I sent to my employer saying they can take your job and go give it to somebody else. Because by then, um, the income was up to nearly two grand a month to be spare night alongside a job. And I, I could have quit my job earlier than that, but I knew I could build an income of £2,000 a month alongside a job because I, I was a grafter. When I was at work, I worked hard. 
I was never lazy. Um, and I just kept doing it, kept doing it. I paid off all the debt that I accumulated in that time. And I used to use the part-time story a lot when I was going to see people. I would, I would go over with a presenter to see people and say, look, I'm making like 12, 13, 1400 pounds every spare time. There's my job wages, 600 quid a month. People think, flip a neck. You know what I mean? So a good part-time story can inspire people to join because a lot of people can sometimes think they can't do clean, easy, and build a clean, easy business alongside a job, and yet people all the time are doing that. It's just about learning to manage your time as best you can alongside a job to make sure you, you, you're getting the most of it. So um, I remember in the early days often wondering would anybody just get on and do it just like me? You know what I mean? Because sometimes when you introduce the people, um, you, you get one person after another person after another person who just doesn't seem to want to build. And it took me a while before I got some good people on board, you know I mean? Some people that decided they were going to stick with this thing. And, and one of the first people that did that was a couple called John and Wendy English. When I went bronze, John and Wendy English had, uh, had gone to gold and that, and, and they really got the bit between the teeth. And they went on to build an SED business within ours, you know what I mean? So, uh, and anybody can do that, build it alongside your job. Um, it's always best, I think, to seek guidance anyway from somebody experienced up late um, when, when you're building alongside a job. When will be the right time to give up your job? Because it can be different for different people. Sometimes people can be better off quitting the job than being in it uh, earlier. But I stuck at it until I was making over two grand a month. Um, and I remember um, setting a goal, if you like, to just break one goal of stimulus a year, that's putting together a team of people turning over like £10,000. And I'd already done it once or twice in the first two or three years and I thought, if I've done it once or twice I can do it again. And that's the mentality you need to have if you can, if you're progressing through the clean easy business, if you can do something once, you can always do it again, you know what I mean? And I, I just um, kept generating as many leads as I could consistently, week in, week out, week in, week in, until I found somebody that said to me, look, I want to make a good go of this thing. And people like that do come along. You know what I mean? And, and, and we would work together, and, and I would work with them to, to get up to go and beyond, you know what I mean? Um, and five years into it, that, that, that's dated the 5th of the 10th of 2000, which is just over five years to the date when I joined. The income had hit five grand a month, which was a huge amount of money. Bearing in mind, I was earning 120 odd quid a week in a job. And um, the work I put in in that first five years, if you like, put in the foundations to pay us for the rest of our lives. This is why it's, it's worth working really hard, as you can. And you, you can draw a line any time, you know, it doesn't have to be your first five years, it could be five years from now, you can work really hard. But I worked really, really hard, and I believe I was one of the hardest work people in cleaners in the early days. Because I'd been skint, I'd been on the bones of my backside, I'd had nothing, and I didn't ever want to come back there. You know what I mean? So I just got my head down and my backside up, and did whatever I had to do to get our clean, easy business built. And I did that on my own, as I said. Esther hadn't joined us one at that point. She'd only joined us at the back end of that year. Um, and she quit her gold stepping business, which she built on foot by herself, to join my clean easy business when the income had already gone over five grand a month. Anybody in here or in any clean easy meeting anywhere in the country from now five years from now could come and do what I did. And there was there was none of the stuff that's around today, like the incentives, the, the fast start bonuses, the, um, even the trips abroad back then weren't as unbelievably fantastic as what they are now. Um, the internet had just been born as I was building my clean easy business. So we, we, we never used like webinars or email loops or contact managers. We just did it with plain old paper. We used to just send newsletters in the post. We used to bring people up. There was there was the easy reach in the early days, you know what I mean? So 
people just take for granted now what there is available to help you with technology, but it wasn't around back then, honestly. Then why not? Why not just give it the best you can for the next five years? You, 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 five years from now, you're going to be somewhere, anywhere. And you, you'll either be earning what you're earning now, um, you might even be earning less, or you could just really, really get busy and try and step it up consistently and, and, and bring people in and, and get help and support people. And, and five years from now, you could be earning two or three times more, or even more than what you are now. This is something which I did from right from the early days, and I still do today. Every year, me and Esther make a list of 50 things you want to achieve in any given year. From get big, huge goals like qualifying for like Jamaica, um, or, or the um, European Conference, for, or, um, and, and, and it could be little things like change the carpet, um, change the washer, upgrade the car, um, have three holidays. It doesn't have to be materialistic things. It could be could be like helping people, help somebody achieve something, you know what I mean? But honestly, if you write yourself a list of 50 things you want to achieve and try and put dates against them, you'll achieve far more than if you didn't. I promise you. It, if you're just getting going, it's, it's things like this will keep you doing clean easy. Because in the early days, as I say, sometimes things cannot go as, as fast or as well as you would like. And if you set yourself some goals that you, you want to achieve and, 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 and look at them regularly, that will keep you doing what you need to do. And if you get to the end of the year, you've got all 50. You, you, you've, you've had a fantastic year, haven't you? It's not about making major sums of money necessarily clean easy. It's just about setting out in any given year to achieve what you want to achieve. You, 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 you might have only I want to achieve gold distributor, or I want to, I want to achieve like senior distributor or something like that. Just write yourself 50 goals that you want to achieve. It could be from now to this time next year that you want to achieve. And it'll keep you doing what you need to do. Because it's easy just to meander from period to period to period, doing what you know you need to do, but not really achieving as much as you could do if you weren't actually aiming for something. You know what I mean? So sometimes setting goals is not easy, especially if you're not used to it. But just write yourself a list of 50 things you want to do or achieve or experience. Like I say, it doesn't have to be a thing. It could be like an experience. It could be like go somewhere in the world or whatever. You know what I mean? So um, definitely helps keep you on track, definitely helps you move forward, and it definitely helps you feel like you're getting through a year and really achieve something. You know what I mean? So set yourself some goals. Um, I put this up because if clean easy had never been any more than this, I would have stuck with it anyway. Honestly. If there was no network or team built on the side and there wasn't the capacity to earn like one, two, three, four, five grand a month or more, I'd have kept doing it because I knew I could build up customers. I, I could put catalogs through doors, I could collect them back, I could deliver orders, and I would have just built as big a customer base over time as I could to pay me 500 to 1,000 quid because that was double and treble my wages back then. You know what I mean? So, um, and all we do, and sometimes when you're you new in the clean is you can you kind of quite get your head around making a lot of money. But all we're doing is teaching people to retail effectively, competently, and then keep doing it. Show somebody how to do it. Find somebody else, show them how to do it. Find somebody else, show them how to do it. There's no rocket science to clean anything. It's not hard, it's not unachievable. All we're doing is teaching people to retail effectively and keep doing it, week in, week out, week in, week out, week Ultimately, at some point, your, your income's going to start to escalate, one grand, two grand, three grand, four grand. Um, and there's just a few points, which obviously Dave's covered, you know what I mean? Um, 
this is okay, make sure you're playing plain easy back to 79%, not the 21. Because hmm. I've seen some really nice people look up their future in clean easy because they couldn't get this right. Teach people to keep their, their account in good order, you know what I mean? And use a weekly planner. When I was working a job, I used to write in all the times I couldn't do clean easy so I could see the pockets of time when I could. I'd put in the meeting first, then I'd plan my week dealing with the different pockets of time, and then the team building activity, primarily for me when I was working a job, was on a weekend, Saturday and a Sunday, because I had more time. And I'd fine tune that plan to pretty much as good as I could get it, until I knew I was doing as much as I physically could, part time, alongside a job. Using a weekly planner if you're working a job definitely helps get more out of a week. And, um, <coughs> you'll find that you can get it better and better and better over time. Sometimes it doesn't always go according to plan. If little things come up from time to time, well, that's human nature. But if you, if you can see a week in advance what you're going to be doing, you'll achieve more. It's the same with using to-do lists. If you use a to-do list on a regular basis, you'll get more done than not doing a to-do list normally. Um, and this is the way it is, and this has never changed since I joined, you know, I've been doing it nearly 19 years, and you steal out of every 10 year one clever dick who thinks they know everything about clean easy, who's going to set the world on fire and actually never actually gets on the start You know what I mean? I just introduced somebody about four weeks ago in uh, Chesterfield. Still to this day, hasn't got going. Laptop not working. Army ID card hasn't got this, that thing. And yet when he when when he joined, he said he was gonna do this, he was gonna do this, this, and that. I thought, you know, wasting my time. Clever thing. You know what I mean? You get a couple of liars, two steady eddies, one gonna get going these five years. And usually out of every ten you'll get like four or five that will do it for me. The other four or five will just for one reason or another just want to do it, you know what I mean? And it's the same for everybody right across clean easy. Every day people are joining, and they'll all be falling into these categories. Some will do it, some won't, so what? Next. You know what I mean? You can never run out of people in this country. There's 40 million working age people who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. I say, as I remember, it's easy to give birth and raise the dead. You cannot make somebody do it. Honestly. Keep a track of your activity as well. If you're into like generating inquiries, if you keep a record of what you're doing, you can obviously week by week increase it. Then it'll be decreasing if you can, or you'll get less and less and less results. But if you if you try and up the amount of stuff you're doing from leaflets to cars to shop ads, if you're buying internet leads, you might be running adverts and papers, you, you might be whatever you're doing, try and increase it and, 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 and keep a record of it. And I'll tell you why this helps, especially again if you, if you work in a job, because sometimes you can convince yourself you're doing a lot, or you're doing enough. But if you want to show to someone upline who's experienced, they'll probably say, actually, you, you, you need to do more. You know, I mean, I did in the early days. I went to see my upline Bonds in the early days, a guy called Steve Bourne. And I thought I was doing tons. I really thought I was. I convinced myself I was doing enough to get enough inquiries coming in to get people joining. And he had a look at mine one week and he says, you have to flip and laugh. Yeah, that's nowhere near enough. You, you need to double what you're doing. And sure enough, when I started to increase the amount of cards, I was going to believe for the shop cards. I joined an advertising pool. As soon as I, I started to increase the amount of people I was speaking to, people started to join. So, um, Keep in track of the activity. Well, um, you'll be able to see how much you are doing or how much you're not doing. You can work that way as well. Try and work 90 day plans. As soon as like, um, the 90 days finish, me and Esther will sit down and just review what, what we've done over the last 90 days. And if we haven't achieved as much as we'd like, we, we then need to work harder if you like the next 90 days, you know what I mean? But um, as Dave said, every year clean easy dangle a carrot and say, look, if you work really hard, 
and bring us X amount of volume of, of business, we will take you on one of these five star trips and really, you, you, you kind of put it into words what you like until you're there. I mean, that, that, that trip on the Adventure of the Seas was unbelievable. Unbelievable, you know what I mean? It was like being on a five star hotel, but it was flown. It was, it was incredible, you know what I mean? Um, but if you just start a 90 day plan of activity with your retail and your sponsor, work through the 90 days, try to increase the zero one, and then get to the 90 days, review it, see what's happened. If you've done great, do it again. If you haven't done so well, you need to up what you're doing, increase, increase activity. This was the first clean easy conference I went on to tell the picture because I couldn't find the original so I didn't get this one on the internet, but I'm over here somewhere. And this was in um, 1999. And in the early days, as I was building clean easy, they, these conferences were, were coming and going. And I used to think, what the hell are you got to do to get on them? Maybe it's all thinking the same. What, what have you really got to do to get on these conferences? But that year, I worked down down hard and qualified for Trip to Arizona, which was unbelievable. It was the first time I'd been abroad, I think, since being in like a bear or something. I mean, um, been clean easy back then in 1999, made us feel special. It took us across the, um, the Arizona desert on horseback with the Indians, and, and, and we'd sit and chill with the Indians. It was an unbelievable experience. I remember one, one day I got out on a horse and there was a guy in called Tony Griffin in Clean Easy, still, still active and still building in Clean Easy, but he was a really big bloke. I mean, you talk, he was like this wide, you know what I mean? And they put him on a horse in front of me and this poor horse nearly buckled <laughs> underneath Tony Griffin, you know what I mean? And I laughed my way, I nearly fell off my horse, laughing all the way around the Arizona desert. But it was an unbelievable experience on Arizona. It's not something in the world you think, well, I'll just nip down the zone for a week or two. You know what I mean? But clean easy took us early. A year later, we qualify for the sea goddess. And compared to like the Adventure of the Seas, this thing's like a little dinghy. You know what I mean? It was just a big yacht, one of the Royal Caribbean yachts. And it has a hundred staff. And there was a hundred clean easy people on there. And I tell you what it is, the staff of that boat had the time of their lives with a hundred clean easy people. We really showed the, the staff how to have a party. <laughs> and we drank the boat dry, actually. In that week, they had to fly more alcohol in. Um, and we were doing daft things because everything was like amazingly opulent. We were ordering like strawberries with chocolate on for breakfast and things like that. And pizzas at three o'clock in the morning, you know what I mean? And then the, 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 the guys had a hard time looking up the horse lot on that boat. Yeah. But it was unbelievable. I went around the Caribbean and went to like Martinique, Barbados, and I couldn't put into words what it was like. It was just unbelievable. I mean, we were jumping off the back end of the sea, and it was. There's one day the guys come up with surfboards with caviar on, and um, I had never tasted ca caviar before. And as soon as I tasted it, I thought, you can beat that. <laughs> I buried mine at the beach on the sand. So, um, in 2001, me and Esther was actually the top achievers in Clean Easy. They used to, they used to have an award called the Top Achiever Award. And during that year of 2000, me and Esther saw what was happening in our Clean Easy business and knew we could move a few positions of the plan as long as we worked with the people who wanted to move with us, if you like. And we did. We went from Gold Exec to Platinum SED in one year and the income went from five grand a month to eight grand a month. Can you imagine getting a three grand a month increase? It was unbelievable how the income just grew, but along that way tons of the team came with us. They all grew their income. Then they um, they achieved as well. We had people going through like senior gold silver exec, gold exec. It, it was an incredible team effort, you know what I mean? But um, it was hard work, like, to, to, to come from there to there, you know I mean? It takes planning, it takes graft, it takes work, but it was worth it to, to get our income up and like that sort of thing. And this is, where am I going? This is um, some of the photos of Malaysia. They actually had the red carpet out for us at 
the local stuff, it must be pop stars or something, it's a bit weird. And we actually got picked up from a limo from our house. And that limo drove us down to Gatwick for like something like 80 or 100 miles. And the neighbours thought, well, must be off for flipping the government, must be drug dealers or something else. <laughs> was, that's me, has to be photographed with the directors back then. And they took us to the Petronas uh, Grand Prix in Malaysia, and we were actually sat dead on the finishing line. And, and, I mean, they couldn't see much, they are coming past like a 200 mile an hour, you know what I mean? And it's really, really noisy. If you've ever been to that Grand Prix, you get a better view on the telly. But it was a definite experience, you know what I mean, the, the Grand Prix. Um, and in 2004, me and Esther got married, and we actually met through Clean Easy. So if you're single, you never know. <laughs> um, then we had a wicked time. And, and I, that's Gavin there. Uh, that's Riaz here, Spoon Foster's on there. So we had everybody we could, really, for their music. Um, with amazing, and like, there was all these clean, easy people, and just like a handful of family, really, you know what I mean? And, uh, they'll never have us back, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> a mini clean, easy comments on but um, it was a wild, wild day, and um, we had a great, great time. You know I mean? This is just four photos from the Adventure of the Seas. Um, clean, easy, make you feel unbelievably special on these comments. As Dave said, they, they can't be on the call of duty to make you feel like you're special, you know what I mean? And some of the little things they do, that makes it all, I mean, the food was unbelievable. I mean, I'm a really fussy eater, and every night there was such a wide choice of incredible food to eat, you know what I mean? Um, these waiters guys were unbelievable. The Royal Caribbean only employ happy people. And these guys were there to make you feel special, just sat around your table, you know what I mean? And afterwards, after we had everybody dead, they'd, they'd gone up on these steps, and the head waiter would say, are you happy? Have, I, have my waiters served you well? And most people would say, ah, oh, yeah, it's been great, you know what I mean? And you're talking like a thousand people dining in one of the restaurants on this boat, because this adventure of the sea is whole, something like three and a half thousand people. You have two and a half thousand staff and three and a half thousand people, so there's six thousand people on this this huge ship. And then they'd start singing and dancing, you know what I mean? The, 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 they were wigged, you know what I mean? It was incredible to watch them. And they really made you feel special. And that was a, a on that adventure of the seas, there was a, um, a really big skating rink, as well as lots of other things, you know what I mean? And they had this. Ice skating the show, I've seen no like it. They brought people in from all over the world, top ice skaters, to do this show, and, and they were incredible. This boat bed of mine is moving all the time, and not one of them stumbled or fell. It was incredible. Um, so if you ever get gun on the Adventure of the Seas, you'll remember it for the rest of your life. It was incredible, Do you know what I mean? I remember one day, on the Wednesday, just parked in the channel, the English channel, and it was a bit rough, you know what I mean? The, the, the even though it's a big boat, you could feel it going like that. And um, Esther went to Hanalaya Duna, and I just sat up on the top deck, just drinking loads of beer. I said, I caught it was free, you know what I mean? Chatting with people there. Um, and we had actually 23 of our team here. Um, they're not all there, two of them went to home because she was really ill, Alison Taylor. Yeah, she had to go home, but um, unbelievable to have people with you in your team and, and, and experience with them, you know what I mean? And some of them, it was the first time there, they'd ever been on a clean, easy conference. Unbelievable, you know. Um, so, like, just over 10 years in the clean, easy, our income had hit up over 100 grand a year, which is 93,000 more than I used to get paid in the job. You can only do that in clean, easy. You know what I mean? Um, that's a letter there dated 31st March 2007. So that tax year 2006, we, we earned over 100 grand, which is a huge amount of money. And, and money's not everything, but as I said, it just allows you to do more with your life than being at the other end skipped, you know what I mean? 
um, and since joint and we were and we over a million pounds, it would have took us 240 odd years to achieve the same job. Well, nobody can be employed for that long as we know, you know what I mean? So, uh, and this is where I was when I joined up. I was living in one of these two bedroom flat things, couldn't afford the mortgage, ended up having to move back to my mum and dad, and yet we live in this six bedroom house in Barnsley, and that garage doesn't exist anymore. We took that out and made it into an office. But um, our mortgage on that was 1200 quid a month, but we paid two and a half grand. We've doubled our mortgage, which we can. And we'll have it paid off within the next seven years. Quicker if I can get it paid quicker. But can you imagine having all that money spared, not having a mortgage? You know what I mean? And right across the country, there's people, ordinary people just like me, who would love not to have a mortgage. Well, you can do that in plain easy, you know what I mean? You can increase your payments to get it paid off quicker, so you can have a wicked lifestyle rather than paying off debt for the rest of your life. These are all two girls. This is a school photo. These two lasses are multilingual. They speak Jordy, Grummy, and Barnsley. <laughs> <laughs> and like the, the take the make out with me all the time. I dad, no dad. You know what I mean? So they, they use Jordy terms all the time, but they've been around us since being born. And growing up with clean easy and the lifestyle staying out of office. <coughs> And I keep saying to them, when you get to 18, you join the clean easy. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, um, the, um, we have a wicked life together as a family. You know what I mean? And, and they've never known what it's like to not be able to do stuff because they've been all over the world with me and Esther because of clean easy. And um, this is the last slide, really. This is something which that that bonus payment there comes into the bank on thursday is seven thousand eight hundred eighty two pound which is more in a month than i used to earn in a year and you can only do that in clean it. i didn't know any other opportunity out there where ordinary people can make more in a month than they can in a year and, and that's like clean it for 13 times a year that's a hundred grand a year and we could be driven and earn a lot more, but me, Esther, and our two kids live happily together every day of the week, and we enjoy life because we've worked hard at all the easy business. And I would only ask that you try to do the very same. Try and build up the clean easy income, and be able to do stuff either by yourself or with your partner or with your family, um, because clean easy changes people's lives and it definitely works. So I hope that's helped anyway, and I'm on the front team. <laughs>